Alright, so we got the April 29th, 2019, almost two months old, high meat. I'm going to go ahead and try another bite. This is going to be my fourth time eating this. This is a lot more uh, slimy now than it was before, so I believe the bacteria has uh, gone through a lot more stages now. Alright, well I will say for this high meat, uh, this stuff does smell pretty bad. Uh, it kind of smells like cheesy, poopy smell. Um, we're going to go ahead and put on our nose clip. It's like a swimmer's nose clip. Actually got some flies and stuff coming over here. So, I'm going to go ahead and quickly eat this. These pieces are actually all kind of big. Oh, big. So every time this this happens, or I start gagging right before I eat it, I think the key to it is not really thinking about it too much, but I do have kefir here to help wash it down. The thing is you want to try to chew on it as much as possible. This actually isn't a lot. I'm actually a pretty big baby when it comes to this, so, but this is my fourth time, so. Whew. You can actually like, so, now it's uh, oh, fuck dude, oh. so it's actually starting to get uh, a lot slimier and shit, <laughs> because um, it's getting older, but it's interesting because even the smell, but not just the smell, but even the taste has actually changed a decent amount to where um, it almost kind of has like, it's hard to describe, but it's almost like a medicine-y type uh, taste or well smell as well to it. So um, I'm basically recording this because I wanted to be as transparent as possible about the um, pretty much everything that I do when it comes to eating this way. Um, so as you can tell, the psychological like hindrance is pretty high. It's really hard for me to eat that high meat, but I, and as you can see, I was gagging and stuff. I think for other people, it would be super difficult to do, but usually I can like force myself to just ignore like my uh, conditioned responses, because that's what it is. I mean, we never eat like raw meat and stuff like that. So uh, eating two month, almost two month old meat, obviously is gonna have a really really hard uh, response for you. Uh, living in a city, <laughs> never eating raw meat, not really being a part of nature, anything like that. Um, so basically the point, the point of eating this is um, basically it's supposed to help with depression and anxiety and things like that. Um, but as I was describing, it's starting to te it's uh, tending to get uh, more medicine-y type um, like smell and taste to it. And the reason why it's doing that, as far as what I, what I know and what I believe, is the reason why it is doing that is because it was used by indigenous people as a medicine. And even like in China, they have what they call century eggs, and they can be like 10, 25 year old eggs, black like nasty, right? I mean, or you would think so, but they actually use it as a medicine. And um, eating raw meat and raw carnivore with good healthy animals is gonna usually keep you healthy anyways. Um, but this is almost like a um, an added bonus, I guess. But I mean, especially if you are someone who tends to have like depression issues and things like that, then this will be even better for you. So it's just, it's just like another, um, added bonus so but anyways yeah I just wanted to so that was my fourth time having that oh there's actually a little 
the hell is that? Dude, what is that? It's like a fly bee. It's got like stripes on it. What the fuck? It's like a zebra bee. But yeah, I just want to be transparent. Um, yeah, it definitely does make you gag, obviously. And yeah, so that's pretty much all for that. Um, and it's pretty normal, but I think in the future too, I'm gonna, cause I have some veal, veal liver in my fridge right now. And I think, um, I don't know if I'll use this veal liver that I have right now. Um, it's milk fed, whatever, veal's better because it, it's not exposed to all the toxins and stuff um, from the environment, uh, like a normal cow would be. But if it's pasture raised, it's still really good quality either way. Um, but I think I'm going to do the same thing with uh, some veal liver. I'm going to actually put it in a jar, cut up into like bite-sized pieces, and um, just let it sit. So, but you do have to air it out like every, I would say three days, air it out, um, mix up the meat, things like that. Um, so then the bacteria continues to progress because, um, and also so you don't get botulism, which is anaerobic, which means it, that's what happens when it doesn't get air. So yeah, if I left that in there for like two months without getting any air, airing it out, stirring it up, anything like that, then it probably would have botulism right now. But <coughs> as far as it is right now, it's um, okay. So yeah, that was just uh, grass-fed ribeye from Sprouts. Pretty much just chopped it up, put it in a glass jar, mixed it up for like two months, and aired it out, stuff like that, and that's pretty much what's been going on. So anyways, I hope this was informative for you guys, and uh, hopefully the traffic wasn't too loud. So peace out.